are you still using chest x-ray to diagnose basic lung pathology and then when that doesn't answer the question jumping to CT well I think that you're gonna find that if you can include lung ultrasound into your care that you're actually gonna have a study that's much better than chest x-ray not quite as good as CT but it is gonna show a lot of pathologies that are uh, there that you don't need a CT for in addition it's readily available at the bedside if you have it in your department or your clinic and I think you can diagnose those pneumonias and other things that you're suspecting without having to go to a CT when that chest x-ray is negative. Chest x-ray is really an archaic test and it just does not do well at showing soft tissue disease anywhere in the body and we shouldn't expect it to show great disease when we look into the lungs. So today we're going to talk about lung ultrasound. My name is Jared Marks. Um, I've been running Pocus Geek for a while and I've been educating fellows for well over a decade and residents for even longer. I'm hoping today to be able to talk to you about lung ultrasound and how you can use that in your clinical practice. So why do lung ultrasound? Essentially you're going to do lung ultrasound to replace a chest x-ray. That doesn't mean you have to get rid of every chest x-ray you do, but you should be thinking about can you use a lung ultrasound uh, more quickly and effectively at the bedside to make some of the diagnoses in those patients especially with respiratory distress or maybe you've gotten a chest x-ray and it's not showing that infiltrate or that pneumonia that you're suspecting based off of your patient's symptoms and you can get this lung ultrasound and that will more likely show that than a chest x-ray will and may prevent you to going further into a CT chest. So when we talk about ultrasound, if you've listened to anything on this channel before, I've talked to you about the binary questions and what are the binary questions of ultrasound? We're going to review those real quick and today we're going to um, discuss one of them in particular. So first question we have is, is there lung sliding? In order for there to be lung sliding, the parietal and visceral pleura have to be in contact with each other, and then you'll see that sliding as the lung inflates and deflates with inspiration and expiration. If there's not lung sliding, we're going to look for what's called the lung point. Um, this lung point can be pathognomonic for a pneumothorax, and it's important we find that if there is no lung sliding. Our next uh, question would be, are there B-lines present? B-lines help us to determine if there's interstitial disease. This could be anything from cardiogenic pulmonary edema to infectious or to uh, pulmonary disease, such as um, fibrosis of the lungs. In addition, we're also going to look at that pleural line and determine if it's irregular or not. We can also see that hepatization occurs, and this is essentially when the lung becomes so full of fluid that it becomes more of a solid organ instead of an aerated organ, and that's consolidation. And then lastly, we're going to be looking to see if there's any uh, free thoracic fluid. Each one of these topics um, probably re requires some time uh, to look into each one in itself, um, and we'll do that hopefully with subsequent lectures if time permits. But what we're going to focus on today is, is there lung sliding? And I want you to walk away from this with an understanding of the anatomy, what we're looking for on lung ultrasound and being able to just basically determine that if there is lung sliding present. We can use any probe when we are doing lung ultrasound, um, even a phased array probe, which I don't have uh, listed here, but my, my particular probe I go to is going to be a convex probe. If you look at some international guidelines, they recommend a micro convex probe. I haven't seen a lot of emergency departments that have that. You may or may not have that in your clinic or your emergency department. Um, but I would I prefer just using the curvilinear. Uh, it allows me to see a couple lung spaces. The one thing you'll have to be careful of is you should use a lung setting if you have that present on your machine with that particular probe. And if you do not, you can use an abdomen setting, but it's, it's highly important that you turn off the tissue harmonics and that you eliminate all the focal zones that you can. Hopefully you can get down to zero focal zones, but if you can't, go ahead and place that focal zone uh, right here on this portion, um, right at the pleural line, and that's where we'd want to see that focal zone be placed if, if it has to be there. Now what we can see here is obviously the rib with the rib shadows and then that pleural line that goes across there. We're going to go ahead and see that right there. And we're going to evaluate this area for lung sliding, and so what we're going to see when we do this is in this video we're going to be able to tell that we have our ribs right here, here, and here. And then we're going to watch that plural line right there and just pay attention to see if it's moving back and forth. Now it's going to kind of shimmy down and back up so it's not going to be a large movement. Uh, many people have described this as ants marching on a log. To me I don't see that but what I do see is a little shimmer there. Uh, this can be difficult so it takes some time to train your eyes. So if you're struggling with that go ahead and watch this clip for a bit 
definitely in these two areas here and here we can see that lung sliding going back and forth and hopefully throughout this lecture you'll get a, a better appreciation of what that looks like. Here's just another example. That was one was a little bit uh, of a more increased depth. Here we're going to see a little bit of a decreased depth and we can appreciate that lung sliding. Again, we're just going to look at that we have rib here, here, and here, and then we're going to watch this pleural line right through there uh, to look for lung sliding. When we talk about lung ultrasound, um, there are some several protocols that have been proposed over the years. Uh, most recently, I, I prefer to use uh, international guidelines that talk about using four zones bilaterally. That would be two anterior and two on the lateral. Um, and that's what I typically do on uh, patients. Um, it most often identifies pathology. What we did learn, though, during the COVID pandemic is that if you have a high suspicion, you don't see it in those areas that sometimes looking in these zones five and six on the posterior thorax may show earlier disease. Uh, we did notice that. Uh, in COVID patients in particular as they uh, decompensated that we would see pathology here first. So moving forward, we're going to talk about going through the different zones and what you expect to see. So right now we can see that there's lung sliding on this and I'm going to go through this. The anatomy is just slightly different in that we're right up in the mid-clavicular line with the probe marker towards the patient's head and a long axis uh, with the body, so a parasagittal view. And we're going to just look at the fact that we can see the clavicle here on the left side of the screen. We have two ribs we can see, and then we see the pleural line along there. And if I take those off, you can see that right there at that pleural line, especially right here in the middle, that we can see uh, lung sliding back and forth here. We can also see it over here. It is a little bit hard to see on this um, part, maybe because the patient's not recruiting those alveoli as they're not having any trouble breathing but we definitely see the lung sliding through these portions here. Um, obtain this view, uh, we're gonna talk about how we move from zone one to zone two. So we're gonna stop, we're gonna appreciate zone one if there's lung sliding there, if there's any other pathologies that exist. And then we're gonna move on to zone two. And in order to move to zone two, it's important that we look at our screen and, and what we're noticing here is right where that bright yellow is, that's the most inferior portion on the patient's chest that we're imaging. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna move that all the way over just so this spot moves all the way to this side of the screen and that we can then evaluate some inferior rib spaces. So as we watch the video here, it's going to slide inferior. That's going to move everything from right to left across the screen. And then in the right uh, lung, right anterior, we're going to go until we run into the abdominal contents and that being the liver on the right side that we'll start to see come into view and we can see that right here in this area that the liver is moving back and forth. We can appreciate the right here, the pleural line is coming down. This is the leading edge of the lung, the inferior edge right at the diaphragm. And as the patient inspires, that's gonna come down and dance in this area for us. And then as they expire, it's gonna come back up out of there. We can also appreciate in this rib space that there is lung sliding present. And so here we see on the right anterior view that they do have lung sliding throughout that side. And we're going to move over to zone one on the left side. And when we move to zone one, again, we're going to place the probe marker or the probe in the mid uh, clavicular line with the probe marker towards the patient's head. And again, we're going to see clavicle through here, right here being the top of it with shadow, a rib, a rib, and they both have shadowing. And then we're going to look at these areas for the pleural line. And so let's go ahead and see what can see this lung sliding in. Uh, zone one. And after we've evaluated for the lung sliding there, we're going to take a moment, pause, and just walk, hold our hands still and watch for that lung sliding. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and drag inferior again, and we're going to go down and look at zone two on the left anterior. So on the right side of the screen, we can see heart motion already. This patient had some abdominal obesity, so that's pushing the, um, the heart up towards the um, superior portion of the body. And so what we end up seeing is that we can only see the heart in this area, and I'll go ahead and play that video again, and then lung sliding in this area. So let me see if I can play that video one more time for you. So we're gonna see as we drag down, we're gonna have the heart come into view. Once you have the heart into view on the left, um, in your anterior portions, you can be done uh, looking there. Once we've finished that area, we're gonna go ahead and go over to um, the right zone three and so we're going to get in the mid axillary line probe marker again directed superior we're going to direct that towards the shoulder 
we're going to stay in that mid-axillary line and we're going to get a view much like this and what we're going to see here is that the pleural line is kind of diving away from us um, and the reason why that is is because the thorax kind of is kind of um, angled away and so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to angle that probe down towards the contralateral hip so that we can get that pleural line right at a 90 degree angle so what we can see here now is that we have that pleural line um, right through here that is nice and perpendicular to the probe. That's going to give us the best view and we're going to watch for lung sliding there. Once we've obtained lung sliding there, we can go ahead and explore down to the next zone. And so we're going to again drag inferior. And we're going to drag inferior again until we see the liver and then we can come back up and evaluate those inferior rib spaces. Again, we'll stay in the mid-axillary line on the right side. This will give us the best view. Once we've completed that, we're going to move on and we're going to go ahead and look for our diaphragm view. This is similar to the PLAPS view if you're familiar with the blue protocol. Um, this it gives us a chance between zone four there and then evaluating this diaphragm to look for pathology at the lung base. What's important is that we pay attention to, we stay in the mid-axillary line and then we fan posterior so we can see this spine line through here. If this spine continues above the diaphragm, so the diaphragm would cut through here, then we're going to have pathology in this area. But if we see it disappear, that's because the air is dispersing the ultrasound waves. And we can no longer make sense of it because it's been dispersed and it won't return to the probe. So what we're going to see here is that we're going to have this video. We can see the liver come into view. We can see a little bit of the kidney come in. And then at the bottom of the screen in this area, we're going to see the spine line. It comes and disappears under the diaphragm. So even though this area is dark, it's unlikely that there's any pathology there. Most of the reason why that's dark is because here at the top of the screen, we can see lung and that's dispersing uh, those sound waves and we're not able to see distal to that. So that's a good sign that there's unlikely to be pathology in the lung base. Now keep in mind when we get to over the liver and spleen, we do want to turn our tissue harmonics back on. And we also want to turn back on focal zones and we can place those in areas that are important to us. Um, and that will help us to see through that liver just a little bit better than if we leave those off. Here's another example of the liver right here. And then we have our kidney right through there. And then this line is the spine line. And we notice that as it gets here, it does not continue straight. And so it comes up into the diaphragm. So even though this is dark, there's no pathology there. Now, one thing we could do to increase this odds of us seeing anything, if there is pathology, we could drag our probe just a little inferior and then try to shoot our image back up this way by angling towards the head a little bit. That will allow us to see above that diaphragm just a little bit better, but this is an acceptable image and we could improve it slightly with doing something like that. So after we're done imaging zone four on the right, we're going to go ahead and image zone three on the left. Again, we're going to go mid axillary line probe marker towards the patient's head. And um, we're going to again see that this uh, line, the pleural line is going away from us. And we're going to go ahead and angle that probe uh, towards the contralateral hip and by doing so we'll go ahead and flatten out that line and be able to get that 90 degree view of that. We can go ahead and drop our depth and zoom in on that just a little bit and then we can continue to assess here in zone three and zone four for lung sliding so we can again see that there is great lung sliding through here and here and we have rib, rib, rib and we can again drag down inferior assessing all those rib spaces until we start to see the abdominal contents. Once we start seeing abdominal contents and the spleen come into view or we think we're at the diaphragm, this is highly important. You need to then drag your hand posterior. You need to get to the posterior axillary line. The spleen is so much smaller than the liver, we have to get to the posterior axillary line in order to get a great view of this lung base. And so we're gonna go back to that posterior axillary line and start seeing images that look like this. Now this can be a really difficult area to image. Again, we see here in this video, the spleen coming into view with the diaphragm being right through here. So the diaphragm's coming down right through there as this person breathes in and out. What we can do, again, like I mentioned in the liver, we can um, come down through this portion. I'm gonna let me get that to play again. We can get look down through this view and try to get an angle of that diaphragm. And by doing so, we can improve our view to something like this. We can see that nice diaphragm coming up through here, and we're gonna pay attention to this area. Now we do see some return of echoes here. This does not mean that this is pathology. 
This is not organized. This actually looks a lot like our spleen, and this is called mirror artifact. One way we can tell that is if we look at our um, diaphragm, it arches down like this, and then this is the same arching line that gives us mirror artifact. What we want to pay attention to is that there is no spine line that we see come here and continue above the diaphragm. Don't get this secondary line confused as being that. Here's another example. This is a still image. Here we're able to see just a little bit better that diaphragm or the spine line comes into the diaphragm. And even though we see some echoes here, this spine line stops here and goes into the diaphragm. So we know that there's not pathology there. So I'm going to give you some tips and tricks to wrap up. So once we've imaged all zones and uh, we've gotten our diaphragms, we're essentially done with the exam, but there's a couple things to remember. When we're imaging the lungs itself, we do not want tissue harmonics on. We want to limit our number of focal zones. And if we're allow, if we're given one focal zone, um, we want to put that at the plural line. Otherwise, we may not see our B lines when we get to that, and we'll do that in the next lecture, but um, we really want to be able to see those B lines, so we need to turn off those tissue harmonics. So how deep do we set the probe? It is easier to see the plural line um, and to determine if uh, there's lung sliding or not, the more shallow we are, but there's some pathologies that we would miss if we don't have the depth set appropriately. And so when we look at this, for example, I'll look at the depth of the plural line and then add 10 to it, and that will be the depth I want to set for my screen. So on this case, for example, say that was four centimeters deep, I would then want the depth of my entire image to be 14 centimeters deep. Uh, that just allows us to pick up the pathology and artifacts that are present and help us make that diagnosis. In addition to angling the probe when we're in the zone three on both the right and the left up in that auxilla, we need to also make sure that our probe is 90 degrees to the plural line. If we're not, we may get an image like this. Now we can tell that there's somewhat of a rib here, maybe a rib here, but I can't really appreciate a nice defined plural line. So as we bring this back into plane, we'll see that nice plural line come into view. And then we can sit there and we can watch that and appreciate for lung sliding right here in this lung field that we see. In addition to that, um, once you've found your view, make sure you anchor your hand. Keep it really still. I see a lot of people moving the probe back and forth and it's hard to tell if there's lung sliding. When you are assessing for lung sliding, you need to hold your hand still, anchor it on the chest wall so that you can then just watch the, uh, the rib spaces and then appreciate if there's lung sliding. If you're struggling, again, like I said before, you can drop the depth, um, but you wanna still do the rest of your exam um, at 10 centimeters deep to the plural line. So I think the fastest and easiest way is just to go ahead and use the zoom function that exists on your machine. And you can just place that over the plural line just like we see here. And we can just, we can see really well that there is lung sliding right through here in, be, in both of those rib spaces. And that's just a quick, easy function to do. And that should be available on most machines. So coming back to this in the end, when we look at the utility of our different imaging modalities that are somewhat available to us, you know, ultrasound can be readily available at the bedside if you have it in your emergency department and you're on your medical floor or in your clinic. It's just something we can carry with us or have readily available and we can make these diagnoses at the bedside. It's also better than chest x-ray at picking up these things. So I would encourage you to develop the skill to look at these things and start by just identifying lung sliding. I think for most learners, that's a good quick thing to learn and start uh, developing an understanding of the anatomy here. So I hope you found that useful in learning lung ultrasound and how to value it for lung sliding. If you have any questions about this or other point of care ultrasound related topics, feel free to reach out to me at pocusgeek at gmail.com or you can comment below. Have a great day.